The information is presented for educational purposes only, is not intended to diagnose or prescribe for any medical or psychological condition, or to prevent, treat, mitigate, or cure such conditions. This information is only presented here for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hi, welcome to the Whole Body Detox Show. I'm your host, David DeHaas, where each week we bring you information on how to heal the body naturally. We're located in Boise, Idaho, where we do a 10-day healing retreat, and are best known for helping people Get their health miracle. If you want to know more about that, go to healingtheincurables.com. That's healingtheincurables.com. Or you can reach out to us on the telephone, 208-378-9911. Enjoy today's show. Good morning, everyone. David DeHaas from Living Waters Wellness Center and your host of the Whole Body Detox Show. Welcome to this week's edition of the show. By the way, if you... Time to the show and you can't listen to the whole thing. I get it. You're busy. You're doing things. All of our shows are put over onto a podcast called Whole Body Detox Show. And you can find those either on our website at livingwatersclean.com, livingwatersclean.com, or wholebodydetoxshow.com. We've got over 50 some episodes up. And today I am going to uh, talk to you about how to heal the body as we always do following the four natural laws. If you have not watched the video, Four Natural Laws of Healing yet, let's get on it. What are you waiting for? Four natural laws, really simple. And in these times when we have a lot of crazy stuff going on, especially when we're cold this time of year, more people are apt to get sick because their body's simply cold. We talked about that in a show about heat therapy. You can find that over on Whole Body Detox Show. About a year ago or so, when I first started doing these shows, I interviewed a gal named Ann Louise Gittleman. And it was a fantastic interview. And she, like me and others in this arena of natural healing, all came to get involved because of health problems. And she pointed out to me that she had actually learned early on in her career from an interesting lady named Dr. Hazel Parcells. And out of necessity, just like when I had to learn how to heal my own body, if you haven't heard that story, you'll hear a little bit of it in the Four Natural Laws of Healing video. But I was very sick years ago, and I had to figure out how to get well. I never signed up to be doing what I'm doing today. It was never my intention. I had grandiose ideas of being, and I was, involved in the real estate industry for a number of years and eventually got into nutrition and health because of necessity. So, so did this healer who lived to be 106 years of age, and she was born in 1899. So quite an interesting story. So she's got some great sage advice, and I'm going to read to you an excerpt out of her book today about her healing journey. There's a lot of things we can learn from what she did. And so we'll begin. My illness began as pain, an unrelenting, excruciating pain across my back. Later it spread to other areas until it enveloped my entire body. It was the late 1920s I was operating a beauty salon I owned in Colorado. The business demanded long hours of hard work on my feet. It was a grueling schedule that went on for weeks at a stretch, with precious few breaks in between. And all during those months that became years, I was suffering from that intense and ever-worsening pain. I knew that the stress of the business and the work it required certainly must have been contributing to the persistent physical anguish I experienced. But something deeper had to be wrong. Clumps of blood were appearing in my urine now, and the pain was mounting. It took every ounce of energy, sheer willpower, really, to get the stop, to get to the shop in the morning and stay there through the whole day. In the night, short of breath, palpations woke me, and I would pace the floor just to keep my heart going. Finally, the pain became so severe that I decided I must seek medical attention. It was clear that I would need to undergo a full medical examination at a large hospital. My husband had been an officer in World War I, so I was able to use the services of Fitzsimmons Army Hospital in Denver. With a companion, I set out. With the doctors at Fitzsimmons, discovered and confirmed my own feeling that the situation was grave and perhaps terminal. I met the verdict of the medical professionals with silence. My friend burst into tears. X-rays showed that my right kidney was two-thirds gone, hemorrhaged away in the blood I had been losing. My heart had enlarged to the point where every one of the valves was seriously damaged. My weakened lungs had also begun to hemorrhage. The diagnosis beneath all these dreadful conditions was tuberculosis, a disease I had contracted, apparently, at one of the military bases where I had lived lived during the war. 
In the mind of the particular doctor reviewing my case, there was no doubt I would die a painful death and very soon. He outlined two or three possibilities for treatments, all every bit as severe as the disorders I was suffering already, I thought. One possible remedy, for instance, was to operate to remove the damaged kidney in order to relieve stress on the internal organs that remained. But that course, for what it was worth, had to be reconsidered because access to the kidney was blocked by the dangerously enlarged heart. And I was not exactly a good candidate for surgery in any case. The truth was that nothing could be done, and finally the doctor himself admitted it. He prescribed a diet of mostly milk and eggs, and suggested I might want to take up residence in a sanitarium. My condition would not improve, he exclaimed, but at least I would be kept as comfortable as possible during what would surely be the last few months or weeks. My trip to Denver had ended in a sentence of death. The notion of institutionalizing myself was abhorrent to me. Locking myself away in a place where people never got well would have been utterly depressing and under the circumstances rather pointless. I returned home and went back to work. Now I knew what was causing my distress and that nothing and no one could cure my disease and in my suffering. I was totally alone in my misery, waiting for moment to moment for the painful death that I had been promised. Medical science had handed me its sad, unalterable judgment, abandoning me to fend for myself. I spent all my life and considerable amounts of money letting others be responsible for my health. And this was the result. They took my money and in return I got a sentence of death. There was nothing they could do. Alternative approaches to healing were unknown then, unknown at least to me living in a small rural town in southern Colorado and no doubt the majority of people at that time, regardless of where they lived. There was no one for me to consult, no books on the subject to read. If I wanted to heal myself, and that was, after all, my only option under the circumstances, I would have to invent a way. I decided to let my body reveal to me the means of its own repair. I stood apart, as it were, and listened, trying to hear, to feel, to understand what my body wanted so they could once again be whole and healthy. My body had its own wisdom, I sensed, and from that profound place within might speak to me and tell me what it needed for its well-being. In this new frame of mind, the first thought that occurred to me was to regard the food I was giving my body for its sustenance. If it was true that we are what we eat, then I'd better pay close attention to the kind and quality of nourishment I would use to treat my body's problems. The diet I'd been given by the doctor in Denver, Denver was presenting problems of its own. My system... I found, could tolerate neither milk nor eggs. I tried a variety of other foods that I thought might be good for me and had similar poor results. What I began to crave was not necessarily a particular food, but simply something green. The only green vegetable in season at the moment was spinach. I ate some, then some more. It tasted wonderful. Before long, following the way I felt, I was eating spinach all the time. Salads of raw spinach, bowls of cooked spinach, big glasses of spinach juice. I was buying spinach in large gunny sacks. It was if I couldn't get enough of the splendid green. For weeks on end, spinach was practically all I ate. It seemed to furnish the only need I had for support. My assistant at the beauty salon was concerned and asked me what I was going to eat something other than that green stuff. I didn't know. My hunger for spinach was my body's way of telling me what I wanted. And I was responding to that demand. A few years later, when I began to study the, the science of nutrition and was learning the chemistry of foods, I understood that it wasn't spinach as such that my body craved, but the folic acid it contained in huge amounts, and for which spinach was the only abundant commercial source. At the same time, I was subs subs subsisting almost exclusively on a diet of spinach. Something else was happening to bring about a fundamental change in my health. A number of new inventions were coming into the beauty culture. Among them, an electric machine that invigorated and rejuvenated the facial skin. The person giving the treatment had to strap the applicators into the arms and then, with the current flowing, massage the client's scalp and face with his hands. I installed one of those machines in my shop and spent four to five hours a day holding the applicators, helping to restore what time and poor nutritional habits had stolen from the faces of the town's socialites. The electromagnetic energy flowing through my body, down my arms, and out through my fingers seemed to invigor me, invigorate me also. In fact, I was to discover shortly the electrical currents saturating my body every day, combined with large amounts of folic acid,
going into my system for accomplishing a remarkable feat of healing. So you definitely want to stay tuned for the rest of this, and uh, let's continue the story. If you remember where I left off, we talked about electrical current that she was running through her hands. Don't forget that part of the story. I began to notice that the hemorrhaging had stopped. I had more endurance and much less pain. At the end of six months, I returned to Denver and to the doctor who had issued my death sentence. He was quite surprised to see me. What was even more of a surprise was the result of the new x-rays. The pictures showed an outline of reformation taking place in the kidney. A new kidney was being built. The lungs looked more normal and had stopped losing blood. The heart was much less swollen. No one was more astonished than I was. Naturally, I'd been feeling better, but I had been working so hard at my business that I hadn't realized the extent of the healing. Now, this complete examination revealed what had been happening inside me. With the help of nature, under its direction, my body was gradually correcting itself. I was in a state of wonderment. I had no awareness then of the chemistry of foods or the amplifying effects natural forces like electromagnetism might have. I only knew that nature was working something entirely miraculous because I had not prevented it. Necessity had compelled me to undertake my own recovery. That day I learned about the marvels that could be accomplished by accepting responsibility for my body and giving it over to the splendid healing power of nature. Later, analyzing what had happened, I realized that my intuition to avoid all drugs, which would have interfered enormously with the healing process, and to concentrate on the natural chemistry of real food that my body craved and needed, had assisted nature in restoring normal function. After that, I built my life back with a few grains of knowledge. I remembered how my father had taught me the mysteries of seeds and how they grow how to sow and how to reap the fruits. For months, that was one of my guiding principles, to look for seeds of information that would grow into knowledge and perhaps someday understanding. Courage to be responsible. Necessity surely is the mother of invention. It prompted me to invent my very survival out of the ruins of an incurable illness. It compelled me to take control of my own health and eventually to forge a life's work based upon what I learned about nature's healing power and the estimable value of personal responsibility. We make our own lives, whether we realize it or not. We create all the hell we live in and all the heaven. The only way to change our lives is through ourselves, our own actions and decisions. We cannot blame others for what we do and are responsible for. In the new time influenced by the feminine principle, we will be asked to be in control of our lives. Handling responsibility for our bodies and souls over to others will not work. People have come to me over the years for help with healing their bodies all have heard the same question from me. Are you ready to take responsibility for your own body? Are you prepared to be accountable for your own existence, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual? One time I was giving a talk to recovering alcoholics on the subject of nutrition. A man got up and began to blame the world for all his misfortunes. Why he hadn't been given opportunity to succeed in the world, why his family and friends had left him, why nobody would give him a job. Everybody and everything were to blame but him. After I listened for a while, I said, wait, let's look at this situation. You're blaming everybody but yourself for your woes. Don't you realize you have dug yourself into the bottomless pit you're complaining about? Living is up to you. Nobody can do it for you. I received a big ovation for that. The fellow just plumped himself down in his chair without another word. People don't always hear but when someone has reached the point where they finally recognize their shortcomings and decide they want to change, they do hear. Let us stop to consider that nature, in her wisdom, has provided every need for the care and healing of our bodies. If we would only step aside and let it work. But humankind, in its great opinion of its own wisdom, uses all the forces at its command to defeat nature. This is just plain arrogance, of course. Actually, the attitude is more of a tangled up and misdirected pride. We need pride just as we need a variety of plants in our garden. Pride is one of the plants in our garden of our personality. It can either flourish in a normal atmosphere, producing a respect and appreciation for the many other elements, or it can override them and shut them aside and take dominance. That is where we either lose or win in the garden of our life. If pride is something overattended, it will grow beyond its capacity to contain its own growth. It will take charge and overpower everything else around, yet beyond any law that re relates to its development. With nature, we're fulfilled in nature, but only if we take 
our own ego out of the way. Ego, arrogance, distorted pride, or whatever other name we give it, really stems from a local lack of understanding of the world. Ego has gotten us into terrible trouble in this century. It's an essential of life, ironically, but has gone out of control. When it comes to taking responsibility, a little self-pride is called for, sometimes quite a lot of it. I was 68 years old and teaching at Sierra State's University in Los Angeles. Some of my students and I went, went to a cherry orchard to pick cherries. I was high up on a 10-foot ladder when suddenly the whole thing went down and I fell to the ground. I was flat on my back, dazed but conscious. The students wanted to move me, and I had to insist that they didn't. Understanding that energies were at work to take care of me, I lay perfectly motionless until I sensed my body's powers returning. I suffered a relatively severe accident, but within a few minutes I was getting back to normal. I could feel energy pulsing through me to repair the shock, working like a million tiny fingers. Because I was an employee of the university, it was necessary for me to be examined by a physician for insurance purposes. I got into my car and drove to a doctor's office. By the time I arrived and was examined, there was no evidence of injury. No broken bones, no torn or bruised skin. I had allowed nature to take its course, and it did so, healing my body according to its own principles. Another time, also when I was teaching in California, it was more difficult for me to take responsibility for my own care. I was leaving my home, walking up the porch. To this day, I don't know how it happened. I stepped out into the air, skipping the three steps below me, and land on the sidewalk on my face with my right arm turned completely around backwards. The arm had been pulled from its socket. No bones were broken, but I had a gash in my forehead from which blood was running profusely. I lay there, unable to move. Then a few people gathered and someone called for an ambulance. I knew I was in for a bad time when we were told by the ambulance administration we needed to have medical confirmation from an attending doctor before they would send help. Since I had no medical doctor, a great deal of explaining ensued and much red tape accumulated. An hour and a half passed between my time of the fall and when I could be taken to a hospital. My problems were just beginning. At the hospital, a nurse came to my medical history and after a few questions said I was not cooperating with her. For example, she refused to believe my age. I was in my early 70s, but apparently looked 20 or even 30 years younger. My sister, who had joined me at the hospital at that time, was 10 years my junior, but looked quite a bit older than me. The nurse was confused. Finally, a doctor came in. I was in terrible pain from the fall, and I'd lost a lot of blood. He sewed up the torn tissue in my forehead with 12 stitches, but when he ordered antibiotic shots for me, I refused them. Later in this book, she'll explain why, about the dangers of antibiotics. I told him I would take care of myself at home with a bath of hot water and apple cider vinegar. He had a good long laugh at that. After the bleeding was taken care of, I was placed on an x-ray table where I waited for the remainder of the afternoon for an orthopedic doctor to, re to reposition my arm. When he arrived, he'd been told I was uncooperative and said, well, I can set that without an anesthetic. The wrenching pain is something I still remember. I was supposed to have stayed overnight at the hospital, but declined. Instead, I went home, took that bath, and in my own time, got well again. I had to keep my wits about me every moment to see that I was not given treatment that in my mind and heart was unwise and intrusive. To the medical staff at the hospital, I was just another accident case. And guys, we're going to continue the story when we come back. But don't forget, she used food, she used electromagnetic therapy, and she took responsibility. And that's what we like at Living Waters. When we do our 10-day healing retreat, I ask them the same questions. Are you ready to take responsibility for your own health? Why did you create this? If you want to learn more about our health retreat, go to our website, livingwaterscleanse.com. The top right, watch the four natural laws of healing. You need to learn that. And by the way, if you've never been in, if you've never tried a colonic yet, colon hydrotherapy needs to be at the centerpiece of your wellness therapy. This week, I'm going to offer a special for just $99. It's normally, this package is normally over $250 with all the freebies I throw in. So don't forget, Call us to the office. Tell them I heard John KIDO. It's $99. We'll be back in a moment. Stay right here. You can't treat the body and heal it a piece at a time. You have to treat the whole body naturally. That's why Living Waters Wellness Center 10 Day Healing Retreat is so successful in helping what I call the incurables back to wellness. Here's what a few clients had to say about their experience at Living Waters Wellness Center. 
For over a year, I've been dealing with gas pains, stomach pains, and been waking me up in the middle of the night, so I never get a full night's rest. And last night, after my first colonics, I slept through the entire night without any stomach pain or any kind of issues. I suffered from migraine headaches for 12 years, once a month, and since I did the 10-day retreat at Living Waters Wellness Center eight years ago, I have not even had a migraine. I've not even had a headache. I had back pain on my left side for about 20, 25 years. After the 10-day healing retreat, the pain is completely gone. To learn more about the 10-day healing retreat, go to healingtheincurables.com or call the office at 208-378-9911. That's 208-378-9911. The preceding examples may not be typical of your experience and may not be right for you. Seek the opinion of a qualified health care professional before determining if cleansing is right for you. Welcome back. I'm David DeHaas from Living Waters Wellness Center and your host of the Whole Body Detox Show. We've been reading you a story of a master healer who lived to be 106 years of age, Dr. Hazel Parcells. And the reason why I'm providing you this depth of her story is because there's so many things in here that we can learn from her experiences. Most of us in the natural healing field are usually came to be here because of our own health problems, just like I did. I had numerous illnesses and diseases, allergies, asthma, fatigue, the list goes on, including cancer, and I had to figure out how to get well because I knew no one else was going to figure it out for me. So like Hazel, I took responsibility for my health and where I was at and decided to figure it out. And today I teach you people that come into our 10-day health cleanse how to get well. And we've got hundreds of amazing stories. You can see a lot of those success, success stories on our website at livingwaterscleanse.com. There's probably, I know people call all the time and ask, well, what about this and what about that? We don't make any claims or anything like that, but guys, if you want to listen to some amazing stories over there, go to livingwaterscleanse.com and watch those. Let's continue with where we left off on the last segment. And if you're just joining us, uh, Dr. Parcells uh, had, had to heal herself, and one of these was a fall, a terrible fall she took. And I continue. She says, I had to keep my wits about me every moment to see that I was not given treatment that in my mind and heart was unwise and intrusive. To the medical staff of the hospital, I was just another accident case, and an uncooperative one at that, because I did not blindly obey them. To me, my predicament was an opportunity to allow my body to heal itself in nature's way. It is not easy to take full responsibility for our health. The system we have developed around illness is one designed to give our bodies over to others, forcing our own experience to the back seat, removing us from the process of our healing. As I write this, well-intentioned people in the country are locked in a heated debate about a plan for national health care. I hear a great deal about how it is the government's responsibility to take care for the health of its citizens. I don't hear much discussion about our citizens taking responsibility for their own health by ruling, really owning their own bodies and learning how to care for them. Of course, even if we want to take responsibility for our health, it may be difficult, in some cases impossible because the medical establishment, including the insurance industry and certain governmental agencies, is closed to our seeking alternative options. Looking back more than half a century to my struggle with incurable tuberculosis, I realized I had to make a choice. Either I was going to accept the death sentence imposed by my illness, be committed to a hospital for the terminally ill and perish there, or I was going to take the full obligation for the treatment of my wasted body. At the core of that moment of truth, there seemed to be a fundamental turning around within me. In that profound moment, I decided to take responsibility for the health of my body and to live. And as you've heard me mention many times on this program, we don't take people here as a customer or a client if they're not willing to take responsibility for their health. I don't like the victim mode people. Uh, we've had a few. We've tried to help early on in our early days, and we realized that was just not going to work. It was a disaster. Uh, those of you who are in the victim mode, uh, you've tried many things possibly, and you always blame someone or something for it not working. And that's just not the type of client that we want. And we have the ability to pick and choose <laughs> who we're going to work with. I've only got so many minutes on earth, and I don't want to waste my breath on people who are simply not willing to listen or take responsibility. You know, we've got a webinar called The Four Natural Laws of Healing. And if you want to come to us, you're going to have to watch that. 
I do not want to talk to someone who has not watched that. You know why? Because I have to then answer a myriad of questions that are already answered in the webinar. And if you don't feel that you have the time to spend six to eight minutes to watch that webinar and learn the four natural laws, then you know what? You're not worth my time. If you're not willing to take the time to invest in you, why should I invest in you? I'm not going to. So, you know, we got to have that understanding. Living Waters is here. Amazing, amazing uh, recipe we have here for healing. And we've got hundreds and hundreds of stories. You can watch those at livingwaterscleanse.com. And uh, it's amazing to me after all these years, all these years we've been doing this, including my own healing. It's amazing to me. I still get to watch these amazing miracles. You know, you have an amazing body. And for those of you who believe in the divine, you know, the divine rests within. But for some reason, we forget a lot about that along the way. My mother years ago treated her breast cancer very unconventionally in many minds' eyes. And at her church one day, at a Bible study, she, people found out that she had breast cancer. And, oh, when are you going to do chemo? When are you going to do radiation? You know, they want to know all those, all the expected things. And she says, no, I'm not doing that. And you could just, the room got silent. You hear a pin drop, like, oh my gosh, she's just going to die, right? But she could hear the thoughts thinking. But my mother is still alive, and it's been many, many years. And she allowed to take the nutrition, to give her body the nutrition it needed. She cleansed out the toxins out of her body. And that cancer went away. The same thing happened to my father. The same thing's happened to me. And the same thing happened to my father-in-law. We took responsibility. And we gave our body a chance. And you give your body a chance by detoxing first. Dr. Bernard Jensen, it's interesting, Dr. Bernard Jensen, who's really one of the big fathers and founders of the 10-Day Cleanse. In the last century, in 1929, he got tuberculosis as well. <laughs> and he was working in a creamery at the time. And by the way, we talked uh, about him and his story with Dr. Ellen Tart Jensen, his daughter-in-law. In one of the first episodes I did, it's one of the most fascinating interviews that I have done with her. She's one of the top iridologists in the country, and she had her own healing crisis that she had to attend to. But she tells his story of how he was working in a creamery, again, eating dairy products, and it was causing his demise. And he quickly figured out that that was not the way to go. And so he spent years, wrote over 50 books on nutrition and health. Uh, at a time when they're at the heyday of uh, back in the 60s, they were treating 160 people a day doing a 10-day cleanse on his ranch in California. Can you imagine 160 people? We, you know, we only take a handful of people here in our 10-day cleanse. I can't imagine the amount of staff that he had to have. Plus he grew all the own organic food to feed those people as well. And they housed them there on site, which is pretty amazing. Would like to go back in time and take a trip through his ranch down there because uh, it's gotta be fascinating. And and uh, I never did get to meet Dr. Bernard Jensen, but I've read you know nearly all of his books. I have them all, haven't finished all of them yet. But anyway, uh, a lot of wisdom comes from there. It's interesting that you know most people today is, oh my God, I'm the victim. Take a look what's going on around us now. All this fear that's been created, so you become a victim. So that you can jump into the what I call not a healthcare system, but actually a sick care system, because there's really no natural wellness healing going on in that system, and there won't ever be. There's too much profit in making money off of pe people being sick. That's just a fact of life. You can see that huh, if you just look around and pay any kind of attention at all. The body has an innate ability to heal. I'm another living example of that. You know, I've had cancer as well. I've had Allergies were, uh, I mean, just so severe. I have no allergies today. None. Absolutely amazing. If you would have seen me growing up as a kid, I was a mess. <laughs> Absolute mess with allergies. Uh, but when I got the body cleaned and detoxed it and healed my gut, and that's where you have to start. That's why it's important you watch the webinar, Four Natural Laws of Healing. Four Natural Laws of Healing. Uh, there on our website. Hi, if you just joined us, I'm David DeHaas from Living Waters Wellness Center and host of the Whole Body Detox Show. We shared with you a story earlier. If you're just joining us, you're definitely going to want to listen to the first part of this amazing story about Dr. Hazel Parcells, who lived to be 106 years of age, had all her faculties. In fact, the interviewer, 
who wrote this book with her uh, was absolutely amazed at how much and how well she was at 106 years of age. She was still teaching. And so this guy that wrote the book with her, uh, a guy named Joseph Dispenza, relates that story in here. It's a fascinating book, and you can get it on Amazon. It's called The Healer, uh, The Pioneer, Nutritious, and Prophet. And she taught a lot of people who went on to become great healers of their own. So if you mentor, she talked about using food, and she listened to her body. One of the things we teach you on our 10-day wellness retreat is how to self-muscle test, how to really tap into your own innate ability to determine what you need, whether it's, hey, do I eat this food or do I take this supplement? Uh, we teach you that first thing. Uh, and most people pick it up very, very quickly, and it's a great tool to have. In my opinion, it's worth a million dollars in itself. I've had so many people who have came back to me. In fact, one guy uh, told me, he says, David, of all the things I learned, the one thing that I learned, and everyone, of course, always has the one thing, but he says, you know what? Uh, I am so grateful and thankful that I learned how to muscle test. It has saved us so much money, so much time, and it's really helped uh, in our healing process here with our own bodies. So that's one of the things we teach you. We teach you a lot on the 10-day wellness retreat. We do one a month. Uh, the next one coming up is January 10th, I believe. We start on Monday. We go straight through the weekend, finish on a Wednesday. It takes about five hours of your time per day. People ask me, can you work? Well, yeah, you can. Some people, some of you listening to this, may not be able to work. I don't know. Depends upon your health condition. Uh, but I have a lot of people that do juggle the job and do this. There are a few days where you're not going to want to work because of the process we're going through. So we do a deep, deep cleanse. And we're going to clean out the entire body. We're going to address the parasites. We're going to address the liver issues, the blood issues. And it doesn't matter what you have. If you want to heal, you must first address the four natural laws. As, as V.E. Iron said, if you follow four natural laws, there's no way you can be sick. You really can't. I'm living proof. Our clients are living proof. If you follow this and you continue that path of healing your body naturally, clean the colon, clean the small intestine, cleanse the blood, get rid of those parasites, get rid of those heavy metals, get rid of those toxins, get rid of all that pesticide, and then apply perfect nutrition. I gotta tell you, a lot of people slip on number four. I don't understand why. I think it's just, you know, they don't feel they're worth it spending money on nutritional supplements or high quality food. But by golly, you know what? You need the high quality food to keep your cells humming. You got 50 trillion cells. You got to nourish those guys. You got to take care of them. So following the four natural laws is really super important. Now you remember, she got and started eating spinach and lots of it because she needed the folic acid. Nobody diagnosed her. The doctor gave her a death sentence. But she juiced it. She <laughs> cooked it. She ate it raw in salads. And then electromagnetic frequency. We have it here a modern day tool called the OndaMed. There's more about it on our website under the tools we use. But we've been using that machine for, well, ever since we started. And we can use it to kill the candida yeast. We can use it to help encourage those parasites to exit stage bottom <laughs> into the toilet. We use it for healing bones, tissue, brain function. There's hundreds and hundreds, bacteria, viruses. We've helped people with the COVID. We've helped people with Oh my gosh, just name it. But what that machine is doing, your body is electric, right? So you got all this power sizzling through you. It's actually amazing how much power is sizzling through you. But as things happen, storms occur, i.e. stress. When stress occurs, then the power gets disrupted. Well, how are you going to undisrupt that power? Well, gently applying uh, pulse electromagnetic frequency will help you do that. And it's very powerful. You don't feel it when it's on you. Now, every once in a while, I get someone says, I can feel something. But uh, most people don't. But it's just a gentle current from 0 to 36,000 hertz. And it's the guy was a genius that invented this machine. But it's going to stimulate your body to clear the blockages so the body has the ability to heal on its own. When you couple... The physical, as she mentioned, you got to address the mental, you got to address the emotional, and you got to address the spiritual. And what's most fascinating to me as the cheerleader here at Living Waters and watching 
the events unfold here is how people come here, of course, for the physical, but once they get here, they start realizing, oh my gosh, there's more I need to address. And they usually come to an understanding, a clarity of what that is for them. I have seen some of the coolest things happen here. I've had people who have been distraught about how they're going to make ends meet when, uh, when they came here and when they leave. Uh, maybe not, maybe right away or maybe a few weeks later, all of a sudden things pop into their life. You know, that law of attraction they talk about in so many movies really does occur once you get the debris out of the body. So the body is functioning, flowing, if you will, with clarity and purpose. And when you get in the flow, when you clean out these heavy metals, when you get rid of these toxins in your body, your body has the ability to restore itself, just like what happened with Dr. Parcells, just like what happened with Dr. Bernard Jensen. Uh, so it's really important to understand that you're not just one dimensional. And when you come in, like I tell people, when they first come in the door, I ask them two things. One I ask them is, what's your miracle? What's your miracle going to be? In other words, when we start this program, it's not, I hope I'm going to get well. I wish I'm going to get well. If only I was well. We take from the stance like, you're well. You just got to apply the steps. And when people jump in with all feet, when they both feet jump in and say, okay, I'm well, let's go. I'm going to tell you, the healing happens very rapidly. And again, when we get the complainers, those that don't feel responsible, those that are blaming someone else, usually they come around. Most people come around that we accept in our program. And like I say, I don't accept everybody. You've got to take self-responsibility. If you're not willing to do that, I really don't want to be a part of your problem. I just don't have the time for that. There's many other people who are willing and able to take responsibility. So take responsibility, as she mentioned. So important. So important to do that. So applying all these tools. The other tools we use on the, on the retreat is heat therapy. We have a far infrared sauna. We have a far infrared biomat. We also use sound therapy. And sound therapy is actually amazing in its own right. Uh, sometimes I have people that sit down and do the meditation at the sound therapy. Uh, it's basically crystal harmonic bowls that we play for you. And you do an intention. And it's amazing. I mean, people go, oh my gosh, that was the best thing ever. That was my number one thing, <laughs> was listening to the bowls. Other people, uh, we give you a lot of emotional tools. Uh, we teach you emotional freedom technique. Uh, there's a lot of tools we give you here. There's a lot of information that we give. And I gotta tell you, I've had doctors come through the clans who I thought, eh, not too much I can teach them, but by golly, they've walked away going like, wow, I learned a lot. I learned some new things, which is amazing. In my book, <laughs> coming from where I came from, so I had to figure out how to get well, and I did that. And, uh, and I love teaching other people those nuggets, those nuggets of gold and wisdom today uh, that people can take and learn how to heal. Hey, it's been great talking to you and sharing with you these stories. I hope you've enjoyed it. Listen to the broadcasts at wholebodydetoxshow.com. All of our shows are archived there at wholebodydetoxshow.com. And don't forget, we have a special this week uh, for you. If you've never done colonics, call the office, book it. It's an, over a 200 and I think it's $75 package. We'll give you, roll out the red carpet for you, give you lots of uh, modalities for just $99. Great value. Join our, visit our website, livingwaterscleanse.com. I'm David DeHaas from the Whole Body Detox Show on Living Waters Wellness Center. You make it a blessed week. We'll see you next week. You can't treat the body and heal it a piece at a time. You have to treat the whole body naturally. That's why Living Waters Wellness Center 10-Day Healing Retreat is so successful in helping what I call the incurables back to wellness. Here's what a few clients had to say about their experience at Living Waters Wellness Center. For over a year, I've been dealing with gas pains, and stomach pains, and been waking me up in the middle of the night, so I never get a full night's rest. And last night, after my first colonics, I slept through the entire night without any stomach pain or any kind of issues. I suffered from migraine headaches for 12 years, once a month, and since I did the 10-day retreat at Living Waters Wellness Center eight years ago, I have not even had a migraine, I've not even had a headache. I had back pain on my left side for about 20, 25 years after the 10-day 
healing retreat, the pain is completely gone. To learn more about the 10 day healing retreat, go to healingtheincurables.com or call the office at 208 378 9911. That's 208 378 9911. The preceding examples may not be typical of your experience and may not be right for you. Seek the opinion of a qualified healthcare professional before determining if cleansing is right for you.